Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today in the name of our Lord and Savior and just give God praise, give Him thanks. I honor Him and I glorify Him. It is such a joy to be able to come to you and bring to you words from the Word. And I trust that as we share words from the Word, that you are receiving such words from the Word and you have been helped and you find that life is worth living because you are living according to God's word. Remind me, dear Lord, what is your plan for my life? I want to know, dear God, what you plan for me. I want to know what you want me to do. So take my lips and let them be filled with praises for thee, Lord. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might will I withhold. Why do I need to know God's plan for my life? God's plan for you must be known by you. Anybody who will design or build something by a plan must know the plan and study the plan. There are many people you would see on a house, walking on a house, but not all of those people that are walking, building that house, are aware of the plan. So the one that knows the plan, the one that has the plan, the one that knows how to read the plan, reads the plan, see the design of the plan, lays out what is in the plan, and give instruction to those who may not even know the plan as what to do. And the house is built. You must know. What is God's plan for your life? When you're building for someone with a plan, it is important to know and build according to the plan. When we were building the church at nights, I would study the plan to let the men know what to do. When one lives his or her life without a plan, one cannot be sure of the results. When you know the plan, you can check the progress. When you live according to God's plan, you live daily looking at what you have achieved or how you are getting along with what you are building. Building by a plan requires finishing one part and moving to another in order to complete the entire plan. Now Saul was living a self-planned life. If you go to Acts chapter 9 and verse 5, here the Bible said, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Sad to say, many believers have planned their own lives. When decisions are made without him, we later find out we should not have done that. Peter made a decision and caused others to go along with him. In John's Gospel, chapter number 21, verse 3, Simon Peter said unto them, speaking of the disciples, I go fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. When Peter was supposed to be out there doing what God had called him to do, the plan of God, Peter went back and doing the old things that he was accustomed to do. Jonah made a decision to go to Tasha. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 2 to 3, the Bible said, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. The plan was clear. God got Jonah's attention. God told Jonah what to do, where he must do it, and why he should do it. Now, Jonah should have obeyed, but in Jonah, Chapter 1, verse 3, Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and find a ship going to Tarshish. Now, you will find that this is always the problem where we want to go and what we want to do. There are times where we want to go is not where God wants us to go and what we want to do is not what God wants us to do. Now watch this. 
Now, Jonah just did not want to go to Nineveh, because later on you would see that he knew that God would forgive the Ninevites. So Jonah went down to Tarshish. Maybe Jonah would have gone to Tarshish and preach. Yeah. So what am I saying? At times, what we want to do not mean that what we want to do is sinful. It becomes sinful when we disobey God and put that which is good in front of that which is best. So he went down to Tarshish and watch what the scripture said. So he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He did what he wanted to do, even though it cost him. He paid the fear, but he thought that would have been the last cost of it, but he made a mistake. Of course, you would understand the prodigal son went into a far country. As we come to Luke's gospel, chapter 15 and verse 13, the Bible said, And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there he wasted his substance with righteous living. Now, as I look at this account, he went to his father and he, he told his father, Father, give me the portion of good that belonged to me. And one of the things that I have noticed is that the father did not argue with him. The father did not say, No, I am not giving it to you. Not at all. Not at all. The father gave him. I want to also show you that he left the Father. We hold on to the verse in Hebrews, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. That verse is so true. But this son left the Father. And I also would like to bring to your attention that the Father stayed right where he left him. He stayed at home. But every day the Father was looking and hoping that he will return. That the day that he decided, I'm going home, before he reached home, the father saw him coming. The father ran to him, hugged him, kissed him, brought him home, and make him welcome again. My friend, if you have walked away from the Lord for any period of time, things may not be going the way that you want them to go, but that is because God wants you to come back home and to be all that you can be. I want you to know that he hasn't moved. You are the one who has moved. And now you need to come back to the Lord. And as you come back, just like you received the prodigal, he will receive you. I want to know God's plan for my life. Why? Because God's plan for my life to accomplish, I must continue to build. God has a plan. I must accomplish this plan. While I am here on planet Earth, and it calls for building every day. Saul entered God's plan when he asked God. Verse 6, And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, after God got his attention, God is now speaking to him. He said, Arise, get up. When God speaks, what he shares is clear. He says, Go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. In other words, God had already prepared someone that when Paul comes into the city, that he will be told by someone whom God spoke to of what he will do. The Lord let him know that he was Jesus, the Lord. May I say to you that he is still Lord. There are times we know God's plan, but after a while we tend to forget. I'll get away from doing God's plan in our lives. And when that happens, we need to be reminded. We need to be revived to continue the plan of God. In Acts chapter 9 and in verse 5, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Things were going okay with Paul. And that statement did not come to him until the day that God dealt with him. He thought that he had things going well. He was well on his way to be a high priest. But God told him, you've been kicking long enough, and it's hard to kick against the bricks. To know God's plan 
And to begin with his plan, you first need to know the architect. To know the architect of this plan is to be saved, is to be born again, is to be a child of God. You say, I am seeking God's plan for my life. God's plan is that none should be lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. It was God's plan when He died on the cross for your sins that you would believe, accept, repent, be converted, and be saved. That's God's plan to begin with. The architect is the one who designed the plan. So if you're going to know the plan, you need to know the architect. And ask the architect, hey, tell me about the plan. One begins his or her walk with the Lord at salvation and continues by knowing His will for one's life. May I ask you, do you know God's plan for your life? If not, I beg you to trust Him today. For thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Why not trust Him before it is eternally too late? Right where you are, you can just bow your head and say, Lord, I admit I am a sinner. That Jesus Christ is the only Savior. I believe and God with all of my heart to the best of my ability. I trust you as Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer and meant it, God will save you. And after He saved you, then you need to know, God, what will you have me to do? My time is up. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. That person that's on your mind, that you would love to share with, just share with them. You may be surprised to know who they will share with. And when you get to heaven, Paul said, what is my joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not you in the presence of the Lord? That's our hope. That's our joy. That's our crown of rejoicing when we see others in the kingdom. And because of you sharing his word, others may just be there. God bless. Have a great day. We love you.